Hello, my beautiful Teletubby Diamonds. Uh, Sheila here with you. And I want to talk about, or better yet, I want your viewpoint. Do you feel that we are living in a world and a society that is creating savages? I'm going to share a few clips with you. And afterwards, I, I am very interested in your take on it and your viewpoint. Here we go. The world. We have been priced out of buying homes. We've been priced out of having kids. Our kids have been priced out of adulthood because most will never be able to leave the financial umbrella of their parents. We've been priced out of certain jobs. I literally can't work here or I'm losing money. We've been priced out of transportation, whether it's luxury item or just the maintenance of keeping transportation. We've been priced out of education, how much you spend on a degree versus what you get back from it. Not worth it. We have been priced out of our neighborhoods and now we're being priced out of the holiday season. People literally stood in line for hours to have Thanksgiving dinner at Golden Corral because it was cheaper than buying food and cooking for your family. All the reasons on why you were a productive, tax-paying, law-abiding citizen we've been priced out of. So if there is no reward for being a good person or doing the right thing, there are going to be more people that are not going to try. We think that the youth is giving up now and they're not thriving. If we continue on this path, they're not going to give a damn. So if you're looking at all these snatch and grabs and thinking, oh, grab my pearls, just wait until you've seen the results of removing books from schools. You think we're being priced out of Black Friday, but we're actually being priced out of civility because those sales, those new trinkets, those new items, those wants, those upgrades were the things that people thrive for and held on to on why they got up and went to work and did the things that they did. And if all of it's being taken away, you are now pricing us out of sanity and civility. We are living in a society that is creating savages because there's no reason to do right. And the only way I can get anything is if I take it. You're either going to eat or be eaten. And it's starting with this holiday season in 2023. You've priced people out of holiday joy. This is not going to end well. The world is harsh. And I just don't got no beautiful stories. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just be getting them ready. Because that's why I think I messed up. If somebody would have grabbed me, pulled me to the side, and been like, look, Tupac, as soon as you step out here, they're going to be at you. If somebody would have explained it to me, I wouldn't have took the same mistakes. But I made those mistakes. And that was my job to stop somebody else from making those same mistakes. To lay it out. To lay out the real map on the world and how it is. Everything I'm saying is a warning, is a, is a, is a plea for help. If everybody was so goddamn worried about me, why ain't nobody came to help me? You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to be no star. This ain't my job. I don't care if everybody don't cheer for me. You know what I'm saying? If you're not cheering for me for what I'm doing, don't cheer for me. Don't cheer because you think I'm cute. You know what I'm saying? Screw that. Cheer for me for what I'm doing, for what I stand for. And when I go to jail, you should cheer louder. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm standing up for what I do. I'm not robbing nobody, not stealing from nobody. I never took nothing. Everything I do, I do to represent my people. I do because I think this is what they want me to do. The world is harsh. And I just don't got no beautiful stories. You know? 
If you only want to work four hours, it's going to be Hold harder that. for you to get out. Shut the fuck up. Stop. <laughs> Sorry. If you only want to work four hours, it's going to be harder for you to get a house. We oh, Jesus Christ. First and foremost, Whoopi Goldberg, shut the fuck up. Stop speaking. You have been rich for the last 40 years. You don't get to hop on TV and speak on anybody's lifestyle at all. Shut up. I am so sick of boomers and older people and everybody in that category calling Gen Z and millennials lazy. Like we're just some generation of people that don't want to work. We just want everything handed to us. We're just super entitled. Cut the bullshit. Stop the cap. That five, six hundred, seven hundred dollar apartment that you had when you were in your 20s, that apartment that you could afford and still save money to buy a house one day, that house that was 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars when you were little, triple that shit, quadruple that shit. That's what we're paying nowadays with, with wages that don't match the increase in pricing. Let's talk about that. The wages, they don't match the increase in pricing at all. So I don't want to hear y'all say we're lazy and we're entitled. Motherfucker, we are working. Most of the people I know are working 40 plus hours a week, 50 plus hours. Some are working 60 plus hours a week. And then when they get their paycheck for their hard work, they pay their bills and then they hope for the best until their next paycheck. So don't look at us like we're fucking lazy and crazy because we're pissed off about the state of the economy, the housing market, groceries, everything like that. A friend of mine just told me she went to Chili's, fucking Chili's last night. Two drinks, two meals and dessert, a hundred plus dollars for a fucking dinner at a restaurant. I used to go to Applebee's when I was little. It was like... $30, $40 for my whole family. Now two people got to go spend over $100. Like, you see how that don't make no fucking sense? But let us speak about it. Let us complain about it. Let us voice it. And now we're lazy and entitled. Another point. Another point. I hate when older people are like, oh, we had to struggle for what we had. We went through war and turmoil for what we had. Y'all do too. What the fuck kind of mindset is that? What the fuck kind of mindset is that? That's like having kids and being like, oh, I struggled and went hungry when I was young, so you will too. You see how that doesn't make any fucking sense? This is not millennials and Gen Z and young people complaining or being entitled or just wanting things handed to us. This is us saying, hey, we are working our asses off every day of the fucking week. And when we get a return on our efforts, it's minimal. It's bullshit. It's crumbs. And we have the fucking right to voice it and... It's exhausting. It's fucking exhausting. I sound like a broken record because I've spoken on this so many times and nothing changes. We are hardworking, law abiding citizens and owning a home is like a pipe dream for us nowadays. Why do we go look at two bedrooms apartments and the lowest price we see is two thousand twenty one hundred dollars. Sometimes most of the time, drastically more than that. I don't want to hear from y'all anymore. I don't want to hear that we're lazy and entitled bullshit anymore. The guy whose video I'm stitching, he did a beautiful job of portraying and showing how it's fucking increased. That 10, 15% of your income that went towards your housing alone, and then you had that 80, 85% of your income still in your pocket for other shit? Forty to sixty percent of our income goes to housing alone. Do you think that the increase in people promoting mental health and going to therapy and shit like that is just for shits and giggles. People are fucking depressed. People are fucking struggling. Let me ask you all this. How many of y'all didn't buy the Christmas gifts you wanted to this year? If any, how many of y'all have a light Christmas tree this year? But last year, or a few years back, you never did. It's not a fucking coincidence. A lot of people are struggling and even worse, a lot of people are faking it. Speak out, speak up. It's going to stay the same unless y'all open your fucking mouth and speak out against it. As long as we say, oh, that's life, it's gonna keep on being life. I can go on for fucking 25 minutes about this shit, but in summary, Whoopi Goldberg, shut the fuck up. Shut your mouth. Along with every other boomer that thinks we're just out here with our hands out waiting for a fucking mansion. We're not. We just wanna put food on the table and have a home over our head and then still have money in our pockets. I don't know, maybe go to the fucking movies. I don't know, maybe spend our money on shit we want to spend it on for once. Is that so surprising to y'all? Y'all are fucking pissing me off with... Sorry. If now, as you can uh, clearly hear and see, people are starting to become very discouraged and they're starting to worry 
and they are filled with so much stress and anxiety. And it seems like there's no solution. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. You know, a lot of people are saying that capitalism no longer needs the consumer to participate. They only care about the billionaire class. Another person here says, we've also been priced out of pets. <laughs> what? Okay, my dog got sick recently. And the vet bill was $10,000? Oh my God, I know how I feel about royalty. But if phase push came to ten thousand, Roy, <laughs> would I pay it? You know what? I would. I, if, yeah, I would. I would because I remember how much money I was willing to pay for Oreo. But there was nothing they could do for my uh, first cat Oreo. You know, and if I had the money, yes, I'm in a minute, in a heartbeat, because they these uh, beautiful fur babies are excellent companions. They make for stress free companionship. <sighs> Another person says the United States, they tax their citizens to poverty. And this woman here, poor Maria, she said, my family had to cancel Christmas. No food, no get together, no presents, nothing. Just another day in America. And you, like, I, 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 um, was listening to this person say how the youth, they're starting to give up. They're starting not to care. So when you see the snatch and uh, what is that they said? Snatch and grab. They see you got something and they want it. They don't care about taking a chance to get it. They don't care. They don't feel that they have a reason to live a lot of the times. If it's going to have to be struggle for the rest of their days and poverty and hardship and no matter how hard you work, <clears throat> you still seem to get absolutely nowhere. Let me see. Another person says they didn't even cook Thanksgiving dinner and they worked a 12 hour shift, came home. They prayed and thank God for everything that they already have. That's a beautiful thing. Another person I had to cancel Christmas. What? Wow, this is this is really, really totally out of hand. You know, we are in a new year, 2024, which I told you I'm very happy. I love making it a uh, New Year's is one of my favorite holidays. And Thanksgiving, which I had a feast on Thanksgiving. Thank you, Yahweh Jehovah, through your son Jesus at my besties uh, house and it was amazing and we are fortunate like that to have each other and the family was full everybody's partying dancing Christmas was awesome I got several uh, received several gifts I forgot to go to a person's house they told me to come by today uh, they had something they wanted me to give me they wanted me to come by um, I forgot I gotta remember this tomorrow you know Another person says, I'll never have a home and I'll probably never get a chance to retire. Now, I work with the legislature and there are people who are working in their 70s, you know. And I know a lot of people are frustrated because they feel that they have nowhere to turn. And the last thing they want to hear, well, turn to God, turn to Christ. Because I remember before my faith was as strong as it is now. Oh, please, please, please. People try to tell me <laughs> when I'm struggling and I, I have this anxiety and this worry about tomorrow. And you want to come at me with some Jesus? What? <laughs> I hope I don't sound, uh, you know, like an antichrist or something. No. However, I kept praying and praying for Jehovah to increase my faith and make my faith so strong that it can move mountains. I want my faith to be so strong that it could part the Red Sea. Please, Father. And I kept on asking and asking. Like the Bible says, keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Keep on crying out. 
and keep knocking, the door will be open. Guess what happened? The doors just fell right open. I remember being in my office almost like a whole week. And because I was so determined to try to get this faith that I'm taught and that we're supposed to see. And the reason why it was so hard for me to develop this kind of faith and trust is because for number one, it was too easy. It was way too easy. That's all I have to do, you mean? And you know how we are taught to be very skeptical. Anything that seems too good usually is a scam. So I kept praying and I kept praying. And then I also keep in mind how I've never in my life ever experienced a man who I could rely on, who didn't let me down, who wasn't abusive. And, you know, in the Bible, Je Jehovah is known as our father. We say the our father, that's a man. Jesus came to the earth, that's a man. So for me to put trust in men, what? Th another thing, what? That was difficult. That was just, mm -mm. I can't do it. I can't. And I, I was reluctant because I, 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 I didn't want to be hurt. I didn't want to be let down. But the Bible also says, if you have faith just the size of a mustard seed, I will I would add, I'll give you what you need. I got you. So then, of course, I did my research on the mustard seed, the size of a mustard seed. It's one of the smallest seeds. Jesus is saying, if you can trust me, please. Just a little. You don't have to have a big, strong faith. Just a little. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So by means of the Holy Spirit, I got that, that faith. I think it was a little bigger than a mustard seed. And guess what? My whole life turned around. I was, I was, I was shaking my head back. And forth. It's so unbelievable. And I don't want to try to gas people's head up or make everything seem it's just that easy. Guess what? It is. It is just that easy. And that's why people are so reluctant to do this. And many people say, well, I prayed to God. I prayed to Christ. But did you trust him? Or were you like unsure? So I did it. I did. I said, I'm going to trust you, Father Jesus. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to just let it go. And, and, and I, you know, this is my testimony. I, you know, because it was hard for me, you know, trying to trust men, five brothers that was whack, uh, husband, two marriages, or engaged to be married or whatever. And they all disappointed me, let me down, was not reliable at all. Mm -mm. So that, you know, what's the beauty of all this is, is that Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, they understand why it's so hard for you to gain this faith, trust. But anyway, I want to help you, please. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, where your heavenly Father and your Lord and your Savior say, Trust in who? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Yet, next scripture at Psalms chapter 37, verse 4 through 6, where it tells us, Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 it says in all your ways acknowledge him. Do you know what it means to acknowledge him? Show that you know who he is. At least Jesus, acknowledge him, you know. Like if you go into a room and nobody speaks to you and everybody just ignores you, they don't even acknowledge you. How would that make you feel? Well, he says in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. And one of my favorite scriptures is found at Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, 
what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear or about your body. What you put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And then it goes up. Read the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 6. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. I love the way it just goes into more detail. Of look at the lilies of the field. See how beautifully they are designed and how beautifully they are dressed. Not even King Solomon himself was dressed as beautifully as the flowers and the lilies of the field. Look at the birds from the heaven. Do you not see how I make it possible for them to eat? If I should take care of them, you are worth so much more to me than they are. Will I not also take care of you? Just trust me. And lastly, I'm going to share with you Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. And when he speaks of anxious, that means also don't worry. But in everything, here you go, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests, let your requests be made known to your Lord and Savior, to Jehovah God and your Lord and Savior. Just let it be known. And the peace of God will, so, will surpass all understanding. Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So like I said, you have so many people who are, you know, they're very worried. But when you put your trust in Jehovah and his son Jesus to do the best for you, you don't have to worry about the, all these things that everybody else is worrying about. Just ask Jehovah God for peace in a situation so you don't have to worry. Because when you worry you are implying that you don't trust that Jehovah is big enough, powerful enough, or loving enough to take care of you and to do what's best for you. Believe uh, my beautiful tubies, diamonds, believe, and you will receive. Jehovah promises it, Jesus promises it, and so do I. I love you. I hope you sleep well tonight. Cause what time is it? 11.28. Yeah, another night of insomnia. I don't know what my issues are, <laughs> but I joined the Facebook. They have several uh, support groups for people who suffer from insomnia. And to my surprise, there are so many people who are only sleeping three to four hours a night. You know, it's not that I'm worrying or anything. I don't worry and I don't have all this major anxiety. My issue is I can't seem to turn my mind off. I'm always thinking about the next thing, the next person I can help. You know, I work as an advice coach for donations and and sometimes people just don't have the money and it is what it is, but they need to talk, you know? So I'm always trying to prepare for my next client. So in preparation for them, my mind is always active. I need to learn how to shut it off and, and I'm going to do research on that. Trust and believe. But there are so many people who are actually operating on only three to four hours of sleep every day. Some people have gone through this for five years. They've gone into the hospital. They've taken almost damn near every medication you can imagine. And they can't sleep. I don't get all of this. Or well, it's like every night, let's say if I go to bed at eight, nine, I try to be to sleep by 11. I try. I get into bed at nine, depending on how much work. You know, I because the legislation is back in, so uh, yeah, it's it's in full effect. So that that's going to be a busy time, you know. But I don't care what time I go to bed, I wake up at three o'clock. So I did research on that, and and it it says that so many people around the world is waking up at three o'clock, and that's okay. But the problem is trying to get back to sleep. But you know what? Do you think she, the true love, worries about that? Not at all. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to do my research. And I'm allow the Holy Spirit to lead me to where I need to find these answers. Because, huh. And then hopefully I can share it with all the insomnia uh, support groups. They even have insomnia chats. If you can't sleep, we might as well talk. <laughs> I say, no, I can't be so bothered with that because I, if I can't sleep, I might as well do something around my house to make it 
fit, you know, tidy and organized. Anyway, my darlings, I'm going to go in now and I'm going to try to get to sleep. I have my fireplace uh, playing. You know, they have some beautiful fireplace with beautiful homes. And I always say smooth jazz. And hopefully, you know, sometimes that works, actually. And, uh, yeah, I got to put down the books and, yeah, I got to clear my bed for all these books that I have. Oh, anyway, darlings, good night, and I love you very much. Jehovah loves you. Jesus loves you so much, too. All you have to do is trust him. He's not called your Lord and Savior for nothing.